My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. I'll be able to make friends. I'm just trying to make you some money. My job's not just to entertain, it's to educate. It's also to teach you, so call me. Call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. We are so, so spooked by inflation that it's got us jumping at shadows. This morning, we got a consumer price index number that ran, oh, red hot, up 0.4%, which gives you a 5.4% year-over-year increase, and that is the highest since 1991. In response, we got a cascade of selling. Sell, 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 sell. This morning is, of course, the inflation nieces do what they do best, freaked out. But then the market rebounded from those levels. Dow ultimately did beat just one point. S&P advancing 0.30%. And the Nasdaq, which thrives on disinflation, jumping 0.73%. Because, because, because the sell-off made no sense. As someone who bought and sold 30-year treasuries in the early 80s when they yielded 14%, forgive me if I don't lose my mind over inflation when the 30 years at 2%. Rather than taking your cue from the stock market, maybe you should have been watching the bond market. Bonds are the ultimate arbiter of inflation. What they do? Treasuries actually rally today, sending their yields lower, perhaps because we got some data from J.P. Morgan indicating weaker consumer spending. If it's true that the Fed's really on the verge of tightening, the bond market sure is a funny way of showing it. Maybe, though, I had an older theory I'm going to bounce off it. Maybe, just maybe, some people are thinking that inflation could soon peak meaning that this might be one of the last red-hot CPI numbers. Maybe that's what the Nasdaq said when it rallied so hard. Now, I know that's contrary to the conventional wisdom that inflation's here to stay, and the Fed's too weak or clueless to stop it. But let me give you an alternative scenario to explain why bonds are rallying even as inflation is supposed to be steamrolling the entire world. Now, I'm going to have to dust off my old whip, my win inflation now button. That's right. Whip inflation, win inflation, this thing was crazy. Do you believe it or not? But during the Gerald Ford administration in the 70s, we all walked around with this win inflation. We beat inflation now, whip inflation now, buttons we had. I can't believe I actually wore one. I mean, you can see them on eBay. Go ahead. You can Google. I mean, you can eBay. Well, you can Google and then go to eBay. You know, people made a lot of bad fashion choices in the 70s, but that pin was one of the worst I ever made, other than the powder blue tuxedo I rented from my junior prom that I swear was made of Scott paper towels. Back to the peak inflation thesis. Let me give you some suppositions that make a ton of sense here. Write these down if you want to, because I think they're pretty important. First, last night we checked in with our resident commodities expert, Carly Garner, who told us that historically oil tends to peak when? Now. This week. That's your takeaway from the last 30 years of data. Now. This week. I know it's just history, but the trend's undeniable. Remember, Garner's the one who warned us to be ready for a natural gas peak. Boom, we got one. Even a week ago, everyone else thought they could easily go above $6, maybe 9 or 10 Hey, but don't forget also Sharif Suki, the chairman of Tellurian and the pioneer of Nat Gas export business. He also thinks the top is already in for America. So we check natural gas. We can check maybe oil. I got another one, though. Now, uh, as I've been picking stocks for a long time, I've kept my eye on a commodity. It's been a fantastic bellwether for the economy, and that's a commodity called liner board. Think boxes, corrugated, okay? Now, we know you can't do business without packaging. Liner board's been up and away for a long time. But today, Truist issued three reports. One was on Westrock, one was on International Paper, and the third was on Packaging Corporation of America. And they rated all three as holds. And this just, this jarred me, people. The moment I saw that, I knew the commodity that's most sensitive to industry, corrugated boxes, must be peaking. Truist sees lots of new capacity coming online, with demand potentially slowing as e-commerce goes back to normal. Now, maybe because my father was an old liner board salesperson, okay, uh, I worked for Stone. I know that when this product peaks, you got to look out below. It means that the producers got greedy and put up too many factories, so prices are now going to spiral lower. It's been so long since people have seen what an actual downturn in inflation looks like, a downturn caused by overcapacity, that they've forgotten pricing really can be a two-way street. Maybe it just had to be as old. Maybe it had to be someone who saw his father come home and watch the price of liner board collapse and knew what was going to happen to our family. Speaking of two-way streets, it's not just container board. 
If you look at what the analysts are forecasting for the chemical companies, and remember, these are the companies that make the building blocks of American industry, they're almost all expecting a down 2022. Again, why? Because of overbuilding, overcapacity, pricing going lower. That's right, packaging, which we keep hearing is a key component of raging inflation, is going to come down and come down a lot faster than most can process. I am saying that, and I'm going to be right. You may think that the big-name consumer brands will simply keep their prices elevated, giving them amazing gross margins once packaging costs come down. Now, nah, that's not the way it works, people. The big retail chains will make knockoff products, you know, with funny brand names like Kirkland. I happen to like that from Costco. And price them well below the brand stuff because they can see how much money can be made even well below. Consumers are now educated enough to know that these private labels, like, like Kirkland, are every bit as good as the nationally branded stuff. As a matter of fact, I happen to think Kirkland's a lot better than most of the branded stuff. Price kills. Fourth, how many times have we heard that this port congestion is the biggest bottleneck to getting goods where they need to go, causing prices of everything imported to spike? But President Biden has now ordered the congested constituencies to come together and figure out a way to deal with the dozens of container ships that are waiting to be unloaded at all times off the California coast, including a mandate that these ports operate 24-7. Now, maybe you think that many of these ports are already going all out seven days a week. Makes sense, right? Yet last week, we spoke with a fellow named Ryan Patterson. He was the CEO of a, a little outfit called Flexport Private. He said there is such a little sense of urgency out there. If you're actually on the ground, you won't believe it. He talked about the desultory unloading he's seen on Saturdays at a port, despite what you might have heard about stretched hours and how it's obvious the system is hardly broken. A couple of cranes working. That's all he said was doing. If we can fix the ports at the same time the factories start recovering from COVID in Southeast Asia and commercial airline traffic in Southeast Asia comes back, opening up more cargo space, Space in the belly of these planes for semiconductors, inflation will cool down dramatically. Supply chains aren't so much broken as they are chaotic and idiotic. We have little data, no organizational pinpoint. Governments should just bring in an Amazon Web Services Pro or Workday or Adobe or Salesforce legend to take a leave of absence and solve this thing. And if it takes higher wages for truck drivers and longshoremen, so be it. You know what? That's called the cost of doing business. We know people will work for higher wages even when the conditions aren't ideal or are suboptimal. I remember going up to the Bakken Shale during the great North Dakota oil rush of 2011. It was a gazillion degrees out there, dry as a bone. Better than the minus 30 that hit the place that winter, though. There was nothing there, nothing to do just the job, no amenities. Uh, there was a McDonald's. That's really about it. The oil workers were making, uh, most of them had not gone to college yet, they're high school graduates, or they might not go to college. Why? Because they're making mid six figures. What's the point if you're going to college to get to make money? The McDonald's workers were making $26 an hour. Now, the whole shooting match went bust when oil prices collapsed. But one thing's for sure. It's easy to find workers if you're willing to pay them enough to do something that they don't even like. I did not meet a soul up there who was working there because they loved the job. You know what they loved? The money. If companies pay truckers what they deserve, enough where they love the work because they love the money, well, you know what happens? You get more truck drivers. And that's a much nicer drive than working in the oil fields of North Dakota. So the supply chain is solvable. You just have to recognize the newfound primacy of labor. And for a lot of people in capital, a lot of CEOs, that's just too hard to take. Shame on them. Now, there are individual signs of price degradation. We got mildly lower used car prices, but only after a huge run. Home sales are cooling as prices have gotten way too high for first-time home buyers. That will ultimately lead to lower home prices. Last week, we heard from Kraft Heinz that we had to get used to higher prices across the board for food stuff. And what happens this week? Corn collapses with a bumper crop. That's the kind of nonsense that occurs when everybody wants to raise prices and you got some guy from Kraft Heinz saying it's all, all going to hell and then corn, corn peaks and goes down. But what I'm uh, talking about occurs... You, you got to forget this whole transit inflation and get used to this new term. It's the first time you're going to hear it. It's called peak inflation. Turns out we don't need the Federal Reserve to destroy the economy in order to save it from inflation. With enough time, capitalism is going to solve the problems on its own. The bottom line, how about this? Be patient. Don't panic. We're getting there. The seeds of deflation are being planted as we speak, and the blossoms, and remember, I'm a gardener, and the blossoms will soon be self-evident to all but those who want to bet against you, the Fed, and capitalism. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.